Hi there, I'm Sonia Elvira Guillermo. Uh, I'm a, an assistant professor at the College of Business Administration in the University of the Cordilleras. So welcome to our BAC 107 Business Research and Statistics. Okay, so I want to thank you for your interest in this course that basically explores the research process and deals with the understanding of the basic research concepts principles. So at the end of this term, it is expected that you are equipped with the basic knowledge and skills in the method of research. So without further ado, let us begin with the introduction of business research. However, uh, before we start by looking into the meaning of business research, let us first um, learn the ways in which research is used wrongly according to Walliman 2012. So research is used wrongly if you are just collecting facts or information with no clear purpose. So it's very important for you to have a clear purpose when you conduct your research. Next is that you are just simply reassembling and reordering facts or information without interpretation. And then another is that you use research as simply an esoteric activity with no or little relevance to everyday life. So if you are going to conduct research, it should be relevant to your everyday life. And then another is that research is used okay, as a term to get your product or idea noticed and respected. So these are the ways in which or some of the ways in which research is actually wrongly used. So what is then research? So when we speak of research, it is a process that people undertake in a systematic way in order to find out things, thereby increasing their knowledge. When we say research is systematic, it means that research is based on logical relationships and not just beliefs. Okay. When we say research is a way to find out things, we mean that there is or there are multiplicity of possible purposes for research. Right. So now let us proceed to the different types of research. So according to Trockim's classification of research, we first have here your descriptive research. So it answers research questions that are largely factual in nature. So questions like how, what, where, when, how much, and how often. So for example, a study on the percentage of regular exercisers would be considered descriptive. So you are simply describing, like for example, what is the percentage of regular exercisers in Baguio City or in Burnham Park? So you are simply describing. The second type of research is correlational. So this research looks for a relationship between variables. Okay, so what, we, what do we mean by this? When one variable varies or changes, another varies or changes too, uh, though not necessarily in the same direction. So an example of correlational topic is link, the link between age and exercise. So do we mean that younger people tend to exercise more than old, older people? who have the tendency to exercise less, or is there a link between age and exercise? The young, the older we get, does that mean that the lesser we exercise? Okay, so is there a relationship? So that is correlational. And then the next type of research is causal or experimental. So this type of research tests hypothesis and designed to explain why something happened. Okay, this is to show, of course, cause and effect relationship. 
So when we speak of hypothesis, we are these are simply statements that can be tested by scientific research. So an example would be the effect of behavior change intervention on exercise participation. Okay, yeah. So what could be the effect of your behavior? Okay, on exercise. If you are lazy, that is your behavior, of course, what could be the effect to your exercise participation? All right. So now that we've seen the different types of research, let us shift our attention to the research process. So how do we conduct research? So the very first step is, of course, to find out or to find a research idea. So we can identify a general topic that would um, that we would like to explore. Let's say you're interested in the behavior of tourists, or maybe you're interested in the behavior of consumers in, okay, Baguio City, something like that. Or we can review background literature to find a new idea for research. Uh, study. When we say background literature, okay, you read existing studies or books or online studies, okay, and see if there is a gap that you can actually fill with your proposed research. Okay, formulating or creating and clarifying the research topic is actually the starting point of your research project. So, once you are clear about this, you will be able to choose the most appropriate research strategy, okay, data collection, and of, uh, of course, data techniques. Okay, so it would be helpful if we actually consider the following. So, try to consider a topic that is interesting to you. It is important because if you are really interested in a problem that you wish to uh, work on, it will be very easy for you to overcome future problems that you may encounter. Also, it would be very, um, or it would be to your advantage if the topic is unique or there are no or maybe few studies conducted on the topic. Also, consider that a uh, topic can be completed in your allotted time. So, we only have like maybe three months, okay, to complete our research, okay? And lastly, make sure that you do not pursue, okay, feasibility study. Why? Because it's different from research, business research. So, your research should not be a feasibility study, a market study, or a business plan okay so here are some attributes or characteristics of a good research topic so you have to make sure or ask yourself that is your topic feasible or you have do you have the capability to complete the topic is your topic feasible okay and here are some guide questions that you can ask if your topic is actually feasible. Are you fascinated by the topic? Do you have a necessary or the necessary skill, research skills? Can you complete the project in a time available? Or will the research still be current when you finish? Or do you have sufficient financial and other uh, resources? Or will you be able to gain access to data? Another consideration is that um, you have to take into account also the appropriateness of your research topic. Is your topic worthwhile? Okay. And here are also, again, here are some guide questions. Uh, for you to determine if your topic is indeed valuable. So, will the examining institute's standard be met okay, uh, by the end of this term or before the end of the term, you will be defending your paper. So, you will face, of course, panel members or will you be able to meet their standards? Diba? Does the topic contain issues with clear links to theory? Are the research questions and objectives clearly stated? 
will the proposed research provide fresh insights into the topic? Are the things likely to be symmetrical? Does the research topic match your career goals? There you go. All right, now that we formulate our research topic, okay, you could either approach it rationally or creatively. So when we use rational thinking, we do the following. We examine, okay, our own strengths and interests. We look at past um, project titles. We discuss, we search literature, or perhaps we scan the media. On the other hand, when we employ creative thinking, we keep track or we keep a notebook, sorry, of our ideas, we explore personal preferences using past projects, we explore the relevance of this topic to business using literature, or perhaps we actually do brainstorming. Okay, other factors to consider include the impact, of course, of this research to your personal feelings and beliefs, and do we have access to data? Um, this is actually very important. You need to have access to data. Or do we have enough time and other resources to conduct and finish our research? And another important consideration is, of course, um, the validity and reliability of your data. So is your data consistent? Does it measure what it's supposed to? And, of course, ethical issues. So please do not... Uh, copy paste or simply copy paste the research of others and present that as your research okay that is very very unethical all right so the second step in your research process is to now convert your idea into research questions um, we will have an activity perhaps later on on this. So as Gray pointed out, uh, re topics are broad, but research questions are definitive and narrow. You consider your research question as consisting of the main question, which can now be unpacked into two different two or two or maybe three sub questions. So this overarching research question is sometimes referred to as your general research question or general focus research question or central research question. So it will be used to generate a set of more detailed research objectives or um, investigative questions to guide your research. Okay. So it will be important for you to turn your research idea into a clearly defined research question okay? before starting your research process. The importance of creating clearly defined research questions cannot be overemphasized. A research question will allow you to say what the issue or problem is that you wish to study and what your research project will seek to find out, to explain, and of course to answer. So the research question will be at the center of your research project. So it is very, very important because it will influence your choice of literature to review your research design, the access uh, you need to negotiate, your approach to sampling, your choice of data collection anal and analysis method, and it will help to shape the way in which you write your research project. Okay. Now, here are some guidelines in writing your research questions. So, you have to make sure that they are consistent with expected standard. So, perhaps you can uh, read other researches for you to have an idea on how to create your research questions. Okay. Make sure your questions are able to produce clear conclusions. So your research questions should be at the right level. Um, perhaps you can use Goldilocks principles or principle, which is named by the analogy to the children's story. There, 
wherein there are three bears in which a little girl named Goldilocks okay, tastes three different bowls of porridge. So she finds out that she prefers porridge which is neither too hot nor too cold but has the, uh, just the right temperature. So Goldilocks test is a test used to decide whether uh, research questions are too big, meaning to say it's, it has too many sources, or too small, it has insufficient substance, or maybe too hot, its sensitivities aroused are as a result of doing the research, or if it is just right. Okay. All right. So these are uh, examples of research ideas and of course their derived focus questions. So for example, advertising and share price. So this could be your general uh, focus research question. How does the running of a TV advertising campaign designed to boost the image of a company, okay, uh, of a company affect its share price or if you are going to study about uh, job recruitment via the internet um, how effective is recruiting for a new staff <clears throat> excuse me via the internet in comparison with traditional methods okay yeah all right now the third step in your research process is to determine how variables will now be defined and measured. So a variable is defined as anything that has quantity or quality that varies. Variables identified must be defined in, ma in a manner that makes it possible to measure them by some form of empirical observation. You should also be able to identif or identify um the specific procedure that will be used to define and measure all variables and then as early as now you have to plan or evaluate the validity and reliability of the measurement so there are statistic tools for this we'll talk about that later on you can also identify your variables after reviewing previous research and determining how research have defined and measured their variables so it takes a lot of reading previous works in order for you to come up with your own set of variables okay so the next step is to identify particular participants or the subjects of uh, for the study so you will need to decide how many participants or subjects will be needed that characteristics uh, or what characteristics they should have and how will they be selected okay so after which we now select the research design so research design refers to the overall strategy chosen to integrate the different components of the study in a coherent and logical way, thereby ensuring the research problem is effectively addressed. Okay, it is a plan of methods and procedures that is used to collect and analyze the data needed. Uh, please take note that research problem determines the type of design that can be used, not the other way around. So first, you have to establish the research problem before you select the research design. Okay. So what research design you could possibly use okay so you can either use a quantitative research or qualitative research so when we speak of quantitative research in it involves of course recording information obtained from participants in numerical forms so as to enable statistical analysis of findings and generalization of those findings to a wider population qualitative on the other hand concentrates mainly on words and meanings and aims to capture the richness and complexity of human experience 
Okay, so this table basically summarizes the difference between quantitative and qualitative. As you can see, quantitative involves numbers, whereas qualitative, it's purely words. Okay, quantitative, point of view of the researchers, qualitative, point of view of the participants. Okay, quantitative, the researcher is distant. On the other hand, qualitative researcher is actually close so quantitative it involves theory testing statistics uh, it's also static sorry um, it's structured it can be generalized it could be hard because it needs reliable data it's macro uh, it involves behavior and artificial setting on the other hand when we speak of your qualitative of course um it involves um fewer emergent process unstructured contextual understanding it's also rich why it involves a lot of words okay it has deep data it's micro it has meaning and it is conducted on its natural setting okay Looking into qualitative research, these are some of the main methods that we use. So um, in our business research, usually in the College of Business Administration, we make use of the combination of qualitative and quantitative, okay? So uh, ethno ethnography participant observation, the research is immersed in a social setting for some time in order to observe and listen with a view to gain an appreciation of the culture of a social group. A qualitative interviewing where we use an interview guide and ask questions from the respondents or a focus uh, group called uh, could sorry be defined as a group of interacting individuals having some common interest or characteristics uh, brought together by a moderator or the researcher who uses the group and its interaction as a way to gain information about a specific or a focused issue or language uh, based approach to the collection of qualitative data which includes the disclosure or sorry it this includes uh, discourse and conversation analysis okay the next step after the selection of research design is now to gather data so this is when you now go to the field to collect the necessary data you need to uh, answer or you need to answer your research question so after gathering research data you now as the researchers would now process your data you will have to define the type of approach that you will use to organize data in preparation for data analysis and interpretation so in data analysis we begin to process um, or we begin the process of turning raw data into data structures that can be used in generating meaningful and useful bits of information also in analyzing data, the analysis procedure can vary widely in sophistication and complexity from simple frequency distribution, that is percentage, to simple statistic measure. We probably use uh, mode, median, mean, uh, range, uh, standard deviation, or maybe standard error to uh, multivariate data analysis techniques. And lastly, of course, to wrap up the research process, we now prepare and present the final report. So this is now a written report that describes what was done, okay, what was found out, and how the findings were interpreted. Okay, so imagine that your paper, there you go, will be an R-glass. So you will construct in such a way that your themes are the broadest at the top, okay, um, and the bottom. 
So the introduction and of course the discussion. So the introduction should begin with placing the work you will present on a broad context. From this point, you will focus more um, narrowly on issues closer to your experiment or your study until you end the intro with a brief statement of a specific question you are attempting to answer okay that is of course your um, research or yeah statement so from general okay that is your secondary research you review and critique okay um, broad area of interests and then you propose solutions to identify problems okay and then you narrow it down to specific that is your primary research you test out or you prove your proposed solution using uh, using specific case studies or maybe survey experiments and then define the nature of your tests okay that are applied to a typical example of a broader area in what ways are these applicable and then of course again you go to the general or you put your work in context and you put your work in context 